Hello, this is Grandmaster Ted Gamadell, and I want to tell you, I developed one of the most effective self-defense programs in the world called the 7 Second Self-Defense Systems. And I want to tell you 10 things that you need to look for in a self-defense program. Before you buy any self-defense program or start any self-defense class, you need to know these 10 things. <clears throat> During my 46 years of teaching martial arts, I've seen all the techniques that are used in real-world self-defense, and I know what really works in the street, and I know what won't work for the average person. And for any self-defense program to work, it must meet the following requirements. Number one, it must be easy to learn and easy to do. There are a lot of great self-defense programs out there, but most of them require years and years of study and lessons and training on a weekly basis for months and even years. And even after that long, they can't even be mastered. It is vitally important that the self-defense program that you are going to study is easy to learn and just as easy to actually do. Number two, it must be totally effective it must be effective for what it is intended to do. And what good does it do for you to practice a self-defense program that doesn't work in the street, but only in the dojo under supervised situations and conditions? It doesn't do you any good to practice techniques that you can't use in the street to defend your life. It doesn't do you any good to learn techniques that you can only do with a partner in the dojo that is cooperating with you and that you're doing choreographed moves. The street attacker will not be choreographing his moves and you won't know what to expect. Your self-defense program must stop any attack as soon as it happens and it must do what it was intended to do. Number three, your self-defense program must stop the attack and allow you to get away. The purpose of self-defense is to get away, not to be in a fight. You will lose in a fight. You can win if you can escape and get away. It is really that simple. Your self-defense program must stop the attack and allow you to get away. You don't want to be in a fight. Number four, your self-defense program must not require too much strength, too much power, or athletic ability. You can't rely upon being bigger, stronger, and meaner, or a better, or a better athlete than your attacker. You must rely on your training and your technique. There are proven, effective self-defense techniques that allow you to break any hold and to stop any attack. Number five, your self-defense program must be something that can be done in a panic situation. You have to learn a self-defense program that also trains you mentally so that you don't panic in the streets. You must practice controlling your breathing and controlling your mind so that when you are in an actual danger situation, you will remain calm. Practicing realistic situations in the dojo allows your mind to get accustomed to the attack scenarios that might occur in the street and to allow you to be comfortable in your responses to these attacks. Number six, your self-defense program must not hurt your partner when you're learning it. You can't learn a self-defense program if you get hurt while training, or if you're always hurting your partner. There are some ghouls that use huge padded costumes for the trainers. And this is fine. And it makes the training more practical and realistic. But it gives the false sense of confidence to the student. You have to be able to feel comfortable against a large aggressive man or attacker who is not wearing padding. And you have to learn moves that won't break
break your hand, your feet, or injure you when you are doing them to defend yourself. Number seven, your self-defense program must be applicable in different situations. You need to practice your defense scenario from as many different positions and as different conditions as possible. The more situations you put your students in, the better. The better for the students and the more practical in the street. It is not wise or advised to just practice the same thing in class over and over and over. Vary your training. Number eight, your self-defense program must not be counter to your moral standards. Many of the moves you learn in a real self-defense class can cause permanent, severe injury, even death. In fact, if you do them right, most self-defense techniques will cause significant damage to the attacker. If you kick someone hard in the groin, you are going to cause them significant damage. If you elbow them hard in the throat or poke them in the eyes with your fingers or a sharp stick, you will cause significant damage. You have to be prepared mentally to do this in the street and after you've done it. And you can only feel confident doing that if your self-defense program training does not go against your morals. If you will be remorseful and in mental anguish for years because you chose to do a self-defense technique that was vicious and did permanent harm to your attacker, then that's not a self-defense program you should be learning. You should consider a different self-defense program. Number nine, your self-defense program must not cause the attacker to want to continue the attack. One of the most important things your self-defense program must accomplish is to not allow or cause your attacker to want to continue to attack you. If your initial response gets someone mad and makes them more aggressive, then that's not an appropriate self-defense technique. Your counter-attack, your self-defense must make them want to quit or allow you to get away. Make them understand that you are not fooling around and that you are going to hurt them if they continue their attack. And number 10, and one of the most important things in any self-defense program, your self-defense program must be legal. You can't do things that would consider, be considered illegal in a court of law. You can't overreact and kill someone who tries to steal your purse or grabs your hand. You can't poke your date's eyes out because they tried to kiss you. You have the right to stop and attack and defend yourself within reason. And if you are about to be raped or fear for your life, then you have the right to defend yourself with significant self-defense techniques that cause considerable damage. I'm not here to give legal advice, only to help you understand that you should be aware that you don't want to over respond with your self-defense counters. When you escape, go away. In the thing, escape. Doesn't mean that you can escape from a simple wrist lock and then poke him in the eye with a pin. I believe that everyone should learn some basic self-defense to protect themselves and their families. It's a dangerous world out there and you need to be prepared. When you are taking a self-defense class, remember, make sure it meets the 10 requirements listed above. This is Grandmaster Ted Gambardella, and I'll see you next time with some more great tips.